Hi, this is Steve from Pixelbump. Welcome to our new tutorial on how to do some car destruction using cloth simulations in Cinema 4D. So the first thing I want to do is kind of go over a few more of the basics of cloth. We dove into it a little bit with the balloon dynamics, but this one I just kind of want to take a more general look at some of the concepts we're going to deal with. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add my cloth tag. And if I just go ahead and hit play, it just starts to fall out of scene. You can see it's starting to deform, but I want to go ahead and restrict it. And I want to restrict it by grabbing all of these points here at the top, that whole row. There we go. And I want to go ahead and come over to the dresser tab of my cloth. And I want to go ahead and hit set on fixed points. Now you can see all those points have turned purple. And if I go ahead and bring the simulation out here and we go ahead and hit play, we'll see that now it's being held right there. And so if you're doing anything like a flag or sails on a ship, this is a pretty good way to do it. But you can see the cloth is really droopy and really light looking which for us isn't great. Now, if you need, again, something like a silk or very light fabric, this is gonna be great for you. But for me, it's not gonna work out so well when I'm trying to simulate something metal happening. So what we wanna do is kind of look at our iterations and stiffness when we're dealing with non-fabric surfaces. And if I go ahead and drop my stiffness down a bit, let's see what it does. Okay, a little bit of change, not drastically different. And that's because we've got a lot of flexi in, in it. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop that down and we'll see what it does. And again, seeing a little bit of change, but nothing drastic. And that's because we have to mix that together with our iterations. Now, if I go ahead and start putting my iterations to a higher number, you're gonna see a big difference in the way the cloth acts. It's not falling as far. It's not jumping around as much. It looks a little heavier. So if I go up again, it's gonna look even heavier still. Now, the thing is, the more iterations you add, the more calculation time it's gonna be. So you're gonna see I'm starting to slow down a little bit, but you're also gonna see this feels more leathery now, it feels a bit thicker. And that's really good. If we were to try to go up with something like maybe 300, go ahead and save. <laughs> Uh, you're going to see the simulation takes quite a hit, but it's working really hard to hold a lot of the original shape. And that's going to be something really, really important for us. So that's just kind of a general idea of how to get some different looks out of your cloth. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we want to do, which is this car. And the first thing I want to do whenever I set up a real world simulation is make sure that I'm in a real world scale. So this car is somewhere of oh, maybe 13, 14 feet long. So I'll bring in a cube and we'll say 400 centimeters is around 13 feet. And there we go. So it's just peeking out beyond the cube. So it's probably somewhere in the 14 to 15 foot range, which is good enough for us. That means we're definitely in a real world scale. So. The first thing I want to do is create a floor for everything, a ground plane. And the next thing I need to do is bring in a sphere that I can use to destroy the car. Now that sphere is a little bit big, so I'm going to shrink it down and I'm going to bring it up just above the car here. Let's say 95. That sounds good. And I'm going to need to go ahead and let's name that. Call it the Wrecking Ball. And we'll go ahead and we'll add a rigid body tag to our Wrecking Ball and we'll add a collider body to our ground plane. So this is just a very simple dynamic setup. So it falls in and goes all the way to the ground and bounces. Now, there is a lot of mass inside a car, and even a heavy wrecking ball probably won't go all the way to the floor on the first hit. 
So we want to stop it somewhere here in the middle, but with the cloth, it's never going to stop that ball completely. So what I figured would be a good way to deal with it is to bring in a secondary sphere that I'll turn into a hemisphere. I'll rotate it around 180 degrees. And we'll go ahead and bring our collision sphere somewhere here about the middle of the car. That looks pretty good. And we'll go ahead and give it a collider body of its own. So now, if I go ahead and hit play, we have some really wacky stuff happening with the sphere. And that's because our collision sphere has a collision shape of automatic. If I go ahead and turn that into a static mesh, now it's gonna be able to fall in right there. So that's pretty good. I'd like to see it do a little more bouncing than that when it hits. Let me go ahead and make my collision sphere shape a little bit bigger. Give it a little more room to bounce around. And we'll go ahead and bring up the bounce on our wrecking ball and on our collision sphere. Go ahead and give them a lot of bounce. Maybe too much, now it's a beach ball. Now it's a beach ball, too much. All right, let's see, how about that? Eh, still a little too much. Just wanna have at least one good bounce in there. There we go. But as you can see, now it's jumping all over the place a little too much. So the way I wanna control that is, let's see, where does it first hit? Around frame 10. I'm gonna come over to my force and I'm going to add some linear and angular dampening. I'm going to start them off at 50% and then maybe by frame 36 bring them up to 100 just to kind of kill all the extraneous motion. And you can see now we've got more bounce than we know what to do with. So let's come back to our collision. Let's go ahead and there we go. That's looking more like it. Bonk. There we go. So it has a heavy hit, a big bounce, and then it settles in, which is gonna work out well for us. So I'm gonna go ahead, and I'm gonna hit Control D, go to my Dynamics tab, I'm gonna to go to Cache, and I'm gonna go ahead and bake that initial simulation. So now if I hit Play, happens without having to calculate, which is great. So I can go ahead and hide my collision sphere and we've got the beginning of our scene happening already. So the next thing I wanna do is go ahead and add a cloth tag to the body of the Prius, which is just the outer skin here. So now if I go ahead and hit play, you can see the skin falls right off the car and drops to the floor. So what I want to do is come to my ground plane and add a cloth collider. So if I go ahead and hit play again, you'll see that the skin still falls straight off onto the floor, but at least it's stopping there. It's not falling through it. Now, the reason it's falling is because it has a gravity built in. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. I'm also just going to turn off all the wind and turbulence effects. The only thing I'm gonna turn on is a bit of global drag. So that way the polygons will settle down a little quicker. So now if I hit play, the car's shape stays where it is, but it's still not interacting with our ball. And that's because our wrecking ball also needs a cloth collider. So if I go ahead and hit play again, now we should be able to see something a little more along the lines of what we're looking for. We're seeing definitely some interaction between the ball and the shape of the Prius. But it's not looking quite right yet. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and bring this out and just turn the preview off there so we can just really focus in and see what we're doing. So like I said, I'm not gonna want a lot of flexing in this. And in fact, I'm just gonna kind of turn off bounce and friction 
and I'm gonna put the stiffness down, but I'm not sure how much. Let's look at it at 100% and see what it does. That's not bad. I'd like it to seem a little looser than that, so maybe 75 for the stiffness. This is a very heavy wrecking ball. There we go. That looks pretty good. But I would like it to also look like a little bit stiffer of a surface. So let's try 10 iterations and see what that buys us. That's not bad. Let's go ahead and bring it up to 50 and see if that gets us something a little nicer. There we go. That's looking pretty good to me. I'm liking that quite a bit. Now, the only thing it's not doing is we're seeing all the direct interaction between the sphere and the polygons it comes into direct contact with, but we're not seeing anything down here along the bottom of the car, and it should have some sort of interaction. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in an attractor, I'm gonna bring it up to about the middle of the car, and I'm gonna go ahead and see one more time, I think it was around frame eight. So frame seven maybe? sitting there yeah around frame seven so here at frame seven I'm going to have zero strength on my attractor I'm gonna go forward one frame and we'll try negative 1000 and we'll keyframe that we'll come ahead a few frames down to zero and a couple more frames and we're gonna go in the opposite direction and then a couple more frames turn it off and what this will hopefully do is give us a little bit of a shimmer throughout the rest of the metal of the car. Now, if we go ahead and hit play, nothing is gonna change. And that is because we need to come into our expert here under the cloth tag and make sure we include our attractor. So I'm gonna go ahead, hit play again, and let's see how much interaction we're getting. That actually looks pretty good. I think let's go ahead and do a play blast of it and we'll see what we got here. We'll just do the first second. There we go and that looks really nice. I really like that extra interaction we're getting throughout the rest of the car. That's really good. So I'm very happy with that and what I'd like to do is go ahead and add that exact same cloth tag to the windows and the interior of the car. So if I go ahead, back it up, and we do another preview, we should see the whole car moving now. And let's take a look. All right, that looks pretty good. We seem to have a little bit of intersection happening here which we don't want. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring my strength down on this, maybe down to 700 instead. Maybe a thousand is too much for it. Let's go ahead and just kind of play through. Since we know the timing looks good. Hmm. Yeah, we're definitely getting a interaction here. What is that coming from? Let's find out. Is that coming from the interior? Most likely, yeah. And you know, the interior isn't giving us a whole lot right now, so I'm just gonna go ahead and kill it rather than deal with that. Or I guess what you could do is come in and remove the attractor from it since that inside isn't really gonna be seen. And let's go ahead and see if that's gonna work better. Let's solve the problem. Let's not just ignore it. <laughs> oh, 
All right, so it's definitely the sphere hitting where it is that's causing this. So it's not the attractor. So if I go ahead and I'm going to come back to my dynamics and I'm gonna clear the cache on it. Let's go ahead and just bring our sphere up a little bit here. I bet we'll solve that problem. So if I go ahead and just bake that out again, and you can see since now it's got all of the cloth objects, the baking of our simulation is taking a little bit longer, but that's okay. We'll hopefully have a better result at the end. All right, so we're back. Let's go ahead and take a look at our new simulation with the slightly moved up wrecking ball. And we'll see if we've solved our problem. And that's looking better. That looks much better. So whatever was hitting down here, it's not quite hitting it anymore. And I actually kind of like it being higher up because we're getting more of a crumple over the top. So I think that actually ends up looking a little better anyway. So we're looking pretty good here, but it is still pretty low resi. Now there are ways to deal with that. And one of the easiest is to come in here grab a cloth surface from our menu and just grab our items with a cloth tag and drop them underneath. And you can see it acts just like a NURB surface. It's going to subdivide it to give us a little more resolution to work with. And you can come in and increase your subdivisions, but it's going to radically change your render times. So if I go ahead and turn off my lines, you can also see it's causing the imperfections of the car to become more apparent. So I'm gonna leave it at subdivision one here, and I'm gonna go ahead and do a preview. And we'll just go ahead and do the, that first second or so again, and we'll see what we've got. All right, that's looking pretty good. You can see we're getting a lot smoother shapes happening here and we've got a much nicer car crushing animation. So that is about the end of the Cinema 4D portion of this. The last thing I would do is come in and cash out my cloth simulations, even if I'm sending it to just a single render machine. Sometimes things can go a little different in the next version of the calculation, so it's always good to cache it, make sure your cache is good before sending it off to render. Now, caching each of these is gonna take a little bit of time because Cinema will go through each one of these individually to do the cache, even if you highlight them together. So it'll run through it three times. If you have 10 cloth objects, it's gonna run through it 10 times. But the Cinema 4D caching engine works pretty fast, so it's not gonna be crazy long unless you have a ton, a ton of polys. So let's go ahead, save here, and we will switch over to After Effects, and we're gonna take a look at how to integrate our Cinema 4D car crushing with a live action plate. All right, so here we are in After Effects. Let's just take a look really quickly at what we've got. So we've got the car backing up, and then I picked the point where I want the transformation to start happening, and then I freeze-framed the car and I just cut it out with a loose mat here. And I put a shadow back underneath it. I've got a patch of blank area here. And I've got a little bit of roto for my foreground elements, the car and the pole. So, so far, just kind of regular stuff here. And let's go ahead and trim that shadow. It's right now throughout the whole thing. And we can see there. So we've got a little bit of a pop, but I think once we add in all the other elements, we're not gonna even notice it. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull open my pre-renders here. And I've got my car that I rendered out of Cinema 4D. And I did my best to match it up as well as I could but you can see it's not exactly, exactly perfect, but that's okay. I think this is going to work just fine. So 
the first thing I'm going to want to do is create a mat. And I'm going to put it right above my crushing of the car. And let's go ahead and keep it out to about the same level. And right here is where I want that to happen. So I'm going to turn down my opacity. And I'm just going to start masking around this area here. Nothing too fancy. And we'll do an alpha mat. And then I'll go ahead and turn my opacity back on. There we go. So now we can see where this blend is happening. And let's go ahead and maybe use a 50 pixel feather over it so it hides that seam very nicely. And we'll go ahead and set some keyframes. So I will set a keyframe there. And I'll come down and we'll see about how far down we need to go. It's like about there to catch all of the destruction that's happening. And I'm not too worried about the ball right now. I'm going to deal with that in a minute. So we've got that coming down. That's looking pretty good. We'll go forward another frame and we'll just keep pulling out our destructed car until our ball is all the way down. Down to about there, about down to there. And that should reveal the whole thing pretty well. So let's just deal with this one little section and take a preview of it. There we go. And that's blending okay. But the color's a little off, so I'm going to grab a hue saturation. And I'm just going to bring down the saturation a little bit. I think it's a little too intense right now. And that helps quite a bit. You can see that's blending in a lot nicer. But you can see, if we zoom in, that there's a big difference between the sharpness of our 3D render and the sharpness of our DSLR footage. And that's pretty standard and easy to take care of with a little fast blur. So I'll go ahead and drop a two pixel fast blur on it. And you can see it's blending in even nicer. But we are seeing the original car through the back here. So to deal with that, I'm gonna duplicate my mat and I'm going to alpha invert it here. And we're getting a little bit of crossover. So I will drop down my mask options by hitting M twice. And I'm just going to pull in the expansion a little bit on my mask. And that's going to clear that area up for us real nice. So there we go. Now, boom. But we got to deal with that ball that's being cut off. And I did that by duplicate that one by making a object buffer for my ball. And if I go ahead and just do a Luma mat, we'll now get that ball separate, which is also really nice because we can color correct it on its own. So I can come in, take a look at it and say, you know, I'd like to maybe bring in the curves and just adjust it a little bit, wash it out just a little bit more. There we go. That's looking better. Very nice. Seeing a little bit of a pop right there. But again, I think we're going to be okay. By the time all the dust has finished settling, I think we'll be past seeing that. So let's go ahead and add in one more pass. And I'm going to bring in the reflection pass put that on top and I'm just going to add it over. There we go. That's nice. Just adding a little bit of extra reflection and especially for the bottom of the ball when it comes in, it's making sure that we have a nice bright reflection there of the car as it's about to get smushed. So that's looking pretty good. 
But we need to add some motion blur to this whole thing. And what I'm gonna do is go ahead, I'm gonna pre-comp this whole thing. Car Crush 3D Renders. And I'll go ahead and just snap it back here to where we first want it to start. And I've got two ways of dealing with this. I can turn on my collapse transformations, but if I grab my pixel motion blur and drop it on top, it's gonna to ignore that and bring back all that black from our reflection layer. So what I'm gonna to do to deal with that is come in here, let's come back and turn off our collapse transformations. And we'll come in here and if you're a fan of Unmalt, this is where you would use it. I am not. <laughs> so I'm just going to use Shift Channels, and I'm going to take the alpha from the red channel. And that is going to knock out that alpha for us one more time. So if I come back in, we can see we've got it nice and clean here. We're getting a little more smushiness here in the motion blur than I'd like, so I'm going to drop the shutter angle and bring up the shutter samples and smooth that right out. So now if I take a look at it, there we go. That's blending pretty well, although I'm getting a little bit of extra reflection here that I don't want. So I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna grab that same mat and I'm going to use it for my reflection layer but I would like to make sure that it covers everything. So I'm just gonna stretch it out. Let's just have to change a couple keyframes here, which is not a big deal at all. So we'll just bring that up, grab these guys, bring them over. If we were dealing with a ton of keyframes, we might wanna deal with this a different way, but since we're just dealing with four keyframes, this is not a difficulty for us. And we'll just bring these last ones over and bring them up. There we go. All right. So now we shouldn't get that little hot spot happening over here on the rear wheel. And that's coming together much nicer. And we're not having to use any kind of a flash or anything to hide that transition. It's happening pretty naturally already. So now that we got that in, let's bring in some other elements that's gonna make this a little more fun. And I'm gonna grab some elements from our destruction pack. And the destruction pack is a stock pack that we sell at pixelbump.com full of all sorts of wonderful explosive and destructive elements. And the first thing I'm going to want to do is grab some ground dust. And I'm going to put it right above my 3D layer, but below my roto layer. And I'm just going to bring it back to where it starts. Let's see. So if this comes in here, maybe about right there, we'll have this starting out. And we'll just clip off the first couple frames, bring it down underneath. Maybe scale it up just a little bit and we'll change its mode over to screen. And that's going to give us some nice ground dust here, some nice disturbance for when the ball hits. Now let's bring this back out. Let it go ahead and have its full run. There we go. All right, that's looking pretty good. And I think maybe we wanna put some camera dust over this as well. So let's see about putting something over the whole top of it. So let's see if we've got our dust starting out about there. Maybe have our second dust element come in just a second later. That's too late, too late. Move it back up. And yeah, still a little too late. That looks
looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and change that one to a screen and I'm gonna drop its opacity a little bit because I think what I'd like to do is add a secondary layer just underneath my roto and kind of split the difference on those two. We'll screen this one and we'll turn its opacity down a little bit. And we've got, now we've got a lot of different dust happening, different angles, different types. There we go. That's adding a lot to our shot. And I think what I'm also going to do is bring in some debris. Now I've got a really nice one here that is good for glass because we want to see some shattering glass here. And when you bring it in, it's going to look all dark. And that's because we want to bring it in and change its mode to add. And now we're only going to get the reflective areas of it. And if I go ahead and make it a 3D layer, I can rotate it. I can scale it up just a little bit, make sure it's landing right down here, the base of the car. And where do we want that to come in? We want it to come in about right there. So let's see. So we'll just have some shattering glass. Start right about there. Whoops, right about there. And let's go ahead and duplicate that and let's put it be beneath the car and let's move it up and over here so we have a little bit of glass shattering behind as well. Now our speed on it's a little slow. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my two debris here and I'm just gonna change them to go 50% faster and to make sure they last the entire thing, I'll just do a time remap and I'll go ahead and do that for my other elements as well. I'll just drag those out. So now they'll last the entirety of the shot. And let's check our speed. Good, very good. Now you can see we lost everything here. And that's because we hit the end of our 3D render. So let's go ahead in here. We'll highlight all of these layers. Control Alt T to bring out the time remap. And then we'll just bring those to the end. So now we won't have that issue. There we go. So everything will settle in and then it will continue. Uh, but our ground dust looks like it's starting right before the impact hits. So I'm going to take my ground dust and just move it over a frame or two. There we go. Go. that's looking pretty good and I'm gonna grab one more debris here I think let's see what we got yeah we've got this nice pavementy kind of explosion I'm gonna go ahead and drop that below my I'm gonna drop it below my other debris and I'm gonna slide it over. And I already know this one's gonna probably be a little slow motion, so I'm gonna go ahead and speed it up. And we'll just time remap that one out. And again, we'll just see where we want this stuff to start hitting. Somewhere around there, I think. And we'll find our first frame that we want to come in. Maybe about right there. Slide it over, bring it down. Go ahead, make it a 3D layer, rotate it into position a little bit, I'm gonna scale it just a little bit. There we go. And these debris are all on top of my car rotor, which is no good. I want them underneath. And I think I'm gonna wanna go ahead and put them underneath my dust as well. It'll look better that way. There we go. Now we're starting to get somewhere.
to let this preview through for a bit and we'll take a look. All right. Now the last thing I think I want to add to this is a little bit of camera shake. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to pre-comp my layers and call this car crush working. And I'm going to go ahead, find where that first frame is. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and add in one of our one of our real camera shakes. And this is a free script I've made for you that's available at pixelbump.com that adds a lot of really great realistic camera shaking to your After Effects projects. I'm gonna come down here and I'm going to select, let's do vibration shake two. We'll have it go four times faster than normal, so it'll be nice and violent. And I'm gonna go ahead and click create the control null. All right, so our control null is now ready. I'll hit OK. We can go ahead and close this window or we can go ahead and dock it. So we can go ahead and have access to that anytime we want. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring over my control null. I can align it up. And I'm gonna go ahead and attach my footage to the vibration shake. And I'm gonna go ahead and let that go maybe a couple frames at full blast and then I'm just going to keyframe it off over maybe five frames or six I think I did six there so I'm gonna go ahead and zero out my position and rotation so that it stops shaking I'm gonna come back and take a look we definitely have some edge bleed there so I'm going to zoom it in a little bit let's see how's the top uh, we got a little bit at the top there, so I'm going to go ahead and grab a motion tile just to fill in that. I don't want to zoom in too much, so I'll just go ahead and use the motion tile to fill in any extra areas there that we might normally see. So I'll go ahead, turn on my motion blur and my motion blur preview. And let's go ahead and take a look at what we've got now. All right, that's looking pretty sharp. We were able to crush a car with Cinema 4D. We were able to integrate that car with After Effects right on top of the original plate and blend them together. The only thing I'm not liking, I gotta be honest, is that we've got a little too much of some of our debris there and I don't like that I'm gonna actually move that underneath the car maybe just have it come out from underneath oh, I think I did the wrong one there which one am I dealing with yeah that one I think I want it underneath there we go there we go that's probably correct there it is so that way we definitely have the ground disturbance, but we don't have a lot of big chunks flying over the top. Looks a lot more natural that way. All right. So I think we're at the end here. I'm pretty happy with that. And I wanna thank you all for watching. If you have any questions, you can always hit me up on Twitter or Facebook or in the comments. Or I think if you roll six 20-sided dice, all the 20, I will just appear before you. Uh, and if you want to keep learning, you can always check out pixelbump.com for more great tutorials and scripts and assets that you can use in your work. Thanks again for watching. Go and create.